Let's get back to Cote d'Ivoire, where the African Development Bank today released the first edition of a new port report that focused on the continent's macroeconomic performance as well as outlook. The new report adds to the regular reports on the state of the African economies published by the EFDB group. Now let's get some insights on the new report from the EFDB chief himself, Dr. Akumi Adishina, as well as Professor Jeffrey Sachs, who is an economist and director at the Columbia University. Outlook and performance report. As we are all aware, the global macroeconomic conditions have recently become increasingly uncertain with the persistence of multiple shocks that make policymaking and investment decisions, just to put it lightly, very challenging. The highly volatile external environment has spilled over to the African continent, threatening to in fact reverse, if not halt, the recovery that we have made from the lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The dynamic and the persistent nature of these global shocks and their interaction with prevailing pockets of domestic and regional risks require regular diagnosis and targeted policy actions to address their impact on African economies. It's against this backdrop that the African Development Bank has put forward the Africa's Macroeconomic Performance and Outlook Report that we are talking about today. This is the bank's new biannual publication to be released in the first and the third quarters of each year. And it aims to provide African policymakers, global investors, researchers, and other development partners with up-to-date evidence-based assessment of the continent's recent macroeconomic performance and short to medium-term outlook amid global economic developments. This new report will be updated with forecasts and analysis from the constant surveillance of regional and global macroeconomic developments. And it will complement, complement. As you know, we have the African Economic Outlook that we release every single year. So this report actually is a complementary report to that. And that bank's annual flagship publication, the African Economic Outlook, will be launched at the sidelines of the bank's annual meetings in May. Of course, this year will be in Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt. And the ambassador for Egypt is here. We are looking forward to being there uh, once again in the beautiful city of Sharm el Sheikh. That will be in May this year. This year's edition of the African Economic Outlook will focus on policies to mobilize private sector financing and harnessing the natural capital for climate change and green development in Africa. The release of this first edition of Africa's Macroeconomic Performance and Outlook Report comes at a time when African economies face significant headwinds as global and domestic shocks undermine progress towards restoring macroeconomic and social stability and sustaining economic recovery due to high, very high living costs stoked by rising inflationary pressures. Every time you pick up the newspaper, all you see is inflationary trends everywhere in the world. Our estimates show that Africa's average real gross domestic product slowed to 3.8% in 2022. That slowdown reflects the impact of downside factors, including spillover of rising geopolitical tensions, climate change risks, and the lingering impacts of COVID-19 pandemic, which have been amplified by the tightening of global financial conditions and the associated increase in domestic debt service costs. However, despite the slowdown, Africa demonstrated continued resilience with all but one country maintaining positive growth rates in 2022 and with stable outlooks for 2023 and 2024. Africa's growth rate is projected to average about 4% in 2023 and 2024. And I must say, growth everywhere is actually quite low. And so that's actually much higher than the 
world's projected averages of 2.7 and 3.2 percent, respectively. Tighter global financial conditions put pressure on Africa's domestic currencies. And you've seen that in all the countries where you are. Massive amount of devaluation, depreciation of currencies, that is stoking inflation in domestic markets. And this is raising the risk of already very high inflation. But inflation is projected to ease in 2023 as countries sustain restrictive monetary and structural policies. Inflation is also expected to decline to single digit by 2024, even lower than the level preceding the outbreak of COVID-19. Now, let me talk about the situation in fiscal positions of countries and current account situations. Both the current account and fiscal positions improved in 2022. The average current account deficit narrowed in 2022 because of improved trade balances built by higher commodity prices. Higher commodity prices and higher exports, while average fiscal deficit narrowed on account of improved revenues, especially among oil exporting countries. And this part of it is one as president of the bank that makes me particularly happy and hopeful, as I'm, as I'm always hopeful, that five African countries have projected annual GDP growth rates of more than 5.5%. And that could return to the league of the world's top 10 fastest growing economies in 2022. So which means that the recovery is good and we, although you see have it asymmetric, but you have a number of countries that can return back to the league of the world's fastest growing countries in the world. The projected stability in medium term growth largely reflects the benefits of policy support in Africa, the global efforts to mitigate the impacts of exogenous shocks and rising uncertainty, and the stable growth in Asia. As you know, Asia, China, many Asian countries, they are the major trading partners, are major trading partners for Africa. And that recovery will boost export, trade, and investment. Africa is growing at 4% per year right now. I do strongly believe, and it's uh, not only uh, on wish and hope, but actually on analytics, that Africa can and I think will rise to growth of 7% or more per year consistently in the coming decades. And that what we're going to see in the next decades, building on the resiliency that we see in this report, a real acceleration of Africa's sustainable development so that Africa will be the fast growing part of the world economy. In a way, it needs to be. It remains the uh, poorer part of the world economy, but that, on the positive side, means more headroom for rapid growth. China, as we all know, grew uh, at uh, at least uh, seven to ten percent per year consistently for forty years between 1980 and 2020. I strongly believe. Again, I would argue if I had time to elaborate on solid analytical grounds that between 2023 and 2063, Africa is going to achieve seven to 10 percent growth and that the Africa we have known in the past as being poor and unstable will be a thing of the past because this is the time of opportunity for a breakthrough that is on its way right now. I think the breakthrough has three components, if I may say so. First is integration of the African economy. Africa is 54 countries, but together as a single integrated economy, it's at the same size as China and India, almost uh, identical, 1.4 billion across the three big parts of the world economy. If the African Union and if the member states 
continue on this path of rapid integration. And that's integration in policy, it's integration in transboundary infrastructure, uh, it's integration in a single market. This will substantially increase Africa's resilience and rate of growth. Second is what we've heard about strategic industrial policy. I think it is absolutely grounded, by the way, on what will be a massive upgrading of skills in the years ahead, because we're going to see a flowering of higher education and advanced skills across Africa. It's already happening, but it will be massive and it will underpin this strategic transformation of industry. And the final part is finance. Africa does not have too much debt, by the way. It, the problem is the debt is very short term. The international capital markets are uh, too unstable. Not enough uh, uh, investors understand Africa's forward looking growth prospects. But we're going to have a breakthrough in long term sustainable development finance. It's going to be led by the African Development Bank, by the way, uh, as it is being led. But I personally believe that the AFDB should be lending many times more than it's lending now, using its good name, its strong policies, its strong balance sheet, and its unique role to increase substantially, especially the investments in human capital and in physical infrastructure, which will underpin a massive increase of business capital investment as well. So just in a nutshell, this report shows that Africa is growing, is resilient, and has the prospects for an acceleration of growth. <laughs>